Alright then gang, so in the last video I introduced the idea of Blade and we used it to do all of this jazz right here which I'm now going to delete because now we're going to look at Blade to use loops and we can use loops in Blade to cycle through arrays or lists of data and output template for each item in that array. So let's start off first of all with a simple for loop, let me show you that. So to do that, we just say at and then for, and then just like in PHP, we have an initializer variable. So we'll call that I and set it equal to zero to begin with. And then after that, we have the condition. So I is gonna be less than five, for example. So I less than five. And then after that, we have the incrementer. So I is gonna plus plus, so add one each time around. Now at the end, we're gonna say end four. So end four like so. And inside, we can output something for each iteration of the loop. So I could say for each iteration, I want to output a paragraph tag. And I'm going to say the value of i is, and we'll output the variable inside double curly braces. And then the variable is just i. So we're going to cycle through this loop. i is going to increase one at a time. And it's going to continue doing this until i is five. So if we save that now and preview over here and refresh, we can see the value starts at zero and then ends at four because once it's five, it's no longer less than five and now it doesn't cycle through anymore. Okay, so that's a simple for loop, but what if we want to pass a list or an array of data through into a template and then cycle through that array of data and output a bit of template or a bit of code for each item in the array? Well, first of all, let's go back to our routes file and do this. And what I'm going to do is delete this thing, first of all, and I'm also going to delete this. Now, I'm going to pass an array into here like we normally would, and I'm going to create a property called pizzas, and I'm going to set that equal to pizzas. Now, we need to create this variable because at the minute we don't have it. So down here, I'm going to say pizzas is equal to, and this in itself is going to be an array of data, an array of three different pizzas. And each pizza in itself is also going to be an array. And I'm just going to paste this in so you can see it. So we have an array right here, and each item in that array is an array itself. It represents a single pizza, and each item in there is either the type, which is Hawaiian, or the base, cheesy crust, type volcano, base garlic crust, and then finally veg supreme and thin and crispy. So what we're doing now is passing through a value or a property name called pizzas, which we're then going to be able to access in here by, you know, saying pizzas like that. And that value is going to be equal to this array right here. We're going to cycle through that array and we're going to output a bit of code for each item in that array. So let me save this file right here and go back to our pizzas template. Now, what we want to do is use a for loop to cycle through this array. So I'm going to say again, at for, then in parentheses, I'm going to use I again and set it to be zero to begin with. And then I'm going to say for as long as I is less than, and we're going to use a PHP function called count, and we're going to pass in the pizzas variable we have access to. Remember, that's this thing right here. We're passing through this variable, which is an array right here. So we're saying that we want to count how many elements are inside the pizza's array. Well, there's three. There's one, two, and three. So for as long as i is less than that, then we're going to output something. And that's fine because i starts at zero. So it will output once for zero, once for one, and once for two. And that equals three times in total, equal to how many things that are inside the array. So that means we can output a bit of template for each item in that array. So finally, after this, we need to increment i once every time. So we'll say i plus plus, and then inside, or rather, first of all, we'll say end if, or rather end for, so we don't forget about it. Then inside the for loop, let's just output a paragraph tag. And inside this, I just want to output maybe the type property of each pizza. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, I need the curly braces. Then after the curly braces, I need to say the pizzas array, because that's what we have access to. 
then in square brackets, I want to get the ith element. So that could be zero to begin with, then one, then two. So if it's zero, it's gonna get the first element. If it's one, the second. If it's two, the third, right? And each time, remember, i is increasing. So it's gonna grab each one incrementally. So we'll pass through i here. And then after that, that's gonna access just the individual pizza array. We want to grab the type property. So again, square brackets, and then we pass through the key, which is type. And that is gonna get us the value of the type in each pizza. Does that make sense? Cool. So let's save this and a refresh over here. And currently we're gonna get an error and that is unexpected return. So if we look in the routes file, it's because we don't have a semicolon right here. So school by error, let me refresh now and hopefully, nope, we still get an error. And this time it says undefined variable type. If we scroll down, ah, so it's this line right here. So we're trying to output those old variables which we're no longer passing through. So if we go up here, we can delete all of this stuff now. We don't need that. And then hopefully now, if we cross our fingers, we won't get any errors. So save that and refresh again. And now we can see the type of each pizza. We're cycling through those and outputting the type for each one. So this is good. But again, I think this is a little complicated. It doesn't read very well. And there's an easier way to do this. And that's by using the for each loop instead. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So at for each, and this is typically what I'd use if I was outputting a list of stuff, and it's gonna be pizza, or rather pizzas as pizza, and then I'm gonna end the for each. So what does this do? Well, it cycles through the pizzas array, and it refers to each one as a pizza. So this can be called whatever you want. You can call it boo if you want, but it makes sense to me to call it the singular of pizzas. So in here, we can output that pizza each time around. So I'm gonna say, for example, a div tag, first of all, and then inside that div tag, I'm gonna output a couple of things. First of all, I'm gonna output the type and then the base. So first the type, and it's gonna be pizza, which is this thing. So each time we iterate the pizzas array, the individual item that we're currently iterating is referred to as pizza. So that's gonna start out as this thing, then this thing, then this thing on the final loop. So from that, we want the type property, first of all. So let's pass that in. And then after that, we'll do another variable. And this one will be the base. So I'm gonna say pizza, then in square brackets, the base, like so. All right then, so if I save this and preview, refresh, now we can see we output the type and then the base for each pizza. Hope that makes sense what I've done there. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could indent some if statements. Before we do that, in fact, I wanna show you a couple of things we have access to inside this for each loop. And that is on the loop variable. So what I could do is output another variable over here so double curly braces, and inside we have access to this loop variable, and we get that inside the loop, and it has information about the loop. And on this loop variable, we have access to a property called index, and we use this arrow instead of square bracket notation because this is an object, not an array. So this index is gonna get us the current index of the loop. So to begin with, it's gonna be zero, then one, then two. So if I save it, and refresh over here, we can see zero, one, and then two. Now also inside a loop, if I wanna embed an if statement, I can do. So I'm gonna do that underneath this. I'm gonna say at if, and then in brackets, I'm gonna say loop, and then I'm gonna access the first property. So this right here is true or false. If it's the first iteration for the first item, it's gonna be true, if it's not, the second, the third, the fourth, etc. it's gonna be false. So we're only gonna output something right here. Let me just end it first of all, if this is true on the first iteration. And the thing we're gonna output is just a span tag and it's gonna say last or rather not last, first in the loop like so. So if I save that and refresh, we can see that at the top we get first in the loop. And it only appears at the top because that is the first iteration and that evaluates to true for that case. Okay, so I'm gonna do another if check. So I'm gonna say at if, 
and then in parentheses I'm going to say loop and then use the property at last this time so you can probably guess what this does it only evaluates to true if we're on the last iteration so if that's the case I'm going to output a span tag again and it's going to say last in the loop okay save that and refresh over here and this time we get last in the loop on the bottom one okay so there we go my friends that's how we can use loops to cycle through data and output a bit of a template for each item in the array. And we are going to be using this kind of methodology later on when we get collections from a database and we want to cycle through that and output a bit of template for each record in the collection.